those. And our first setup is going to be out of the play flood. I think this is like the main power play of the scheme, the play that you must make go, the play that you will make go, the play that you will run again and again and again. So the setup for this first setup is we're going to audible over into the play. Then we're just going to streak our left side receiver, and we're going to slot apprentice post our outside right receiver on the right-hand side of the screen. If you want to, you can put slot apprentice on him and tight end apprentice here, or most at this point in the year, most of us probably have high route master. Now, the main thing here is we just have a nice little flood concept to the left-hand side, and this corner route is really one of the better corner routes in the game because it's going to be able to beat man coverage really well. It's also going to be able to kind of just get in a really soft spot, especially against baseline press dollar and we'll talk about some of the strategies that your opponent can use to defend this but this is a really really good little route combo it's real simple but it's really really effective now let's say for example that your user decides that they're going to go guard the the um the flood corner route so we'll show you what that would look like so if their user decides hey i'm going to go guard the flood corner route what you're going to see i'm going to sit right here it's going to leave this right side middle open so you'll see they go and then we're going to look to throw right in that little pocket right there against that coverage. Now, again, obviously this is against drop eight. Most people are going to be sending some pressure in behind it as well, which is another little factor. But basically, you're just going to read left to right on the play flood. It's really just a simple, uh, simple flood concept. And you really are looking high to low. So let's say, for example, that they try to use a cloud flat over here on the left side. You'll see kind of instantly that this flat is open. So you just take it, get up field, get your 10 yards. You know, kind of keeping the read simple, and that's what I think tight slots does a really good job of, is is really just simple reads. Now, some things that you'll get every now and then occasionally if you are running up against tight slots is they might man this guy up here, they might man this guy up here, and they might man the running back up like this. So this is a, a legitimate adjustment sequence that somebody might use against this. And so as far as reads go, again, they're going to have to use her that post route. And the other thing is, this is where your tight end is going to come right open underneath. So, you know, there's just a lot they have to do to stop this play with good user and all that. And really one of the main things that you're going to see them do is they're going to start dropping the safety on the left side into a cloud flat or a deep curl flat zone. So something that looks something kind of like what you see on your screen here. And then obviously this guy could be blitzing which would then allow you to throw the backside post because they would have to use the drag, which will show that window in just a minute. But I did want to show this. So you see how this safety cloud flat, he kind of he kind of looks like he's going to guard it, but he doesn't really get deep enough to be able to defend that route. This is why this route combo is so effective because really the main way or the main thing that they can actually do to stop this is get into some type of a cover two shell some type of a cover two shell. This is kind of the, the meta way that people will try to defend you if you're running tight slots. And they're gonna you know, essentially do this kind of cover two, double flat style of defense. And if we go over to the play flood, you're gonna see here that this is gonna do a little bit better of a job. These backed off cloud flats will certainly do a little better of a job of getting depth against that deep corner. As you see, late in the play, he does go down. But again, if they put a zone drop 30 there, they put a zone drop 30 there and you have to kind of be ready for that and understand how to how to attack that. So one of the best ways to attack that is our second setup that we're going to show you. And this one is going to be out of the play four verticals. So again, if they if they start to give you this look that you see on your screen a lot, this is where I like to go to kind of a secondary setup out of the play four verticals, where what we're going to do is we're going to slot apprentice post the left side post route, or we're going to streak the running back and we're going to hitch this right side uh, receiver. So you see this is the route combination. The flat routes get pulled out really quick and the running back's going to get open kind of right in that soft spot against the coverage. As you can see, real soft spot for him to get open, but he is able to beat the double Mabel a lot. So if you think about how are they going to use her that, it does kind of depend on who you're playing, but a lot of times they're going to run to that with their user. So their defense might look something like what you see on your screen here. And so if it does look something like this, what you'll see is they're going to run to the left side of the screen, which is going to then leave this little hitch right there to be able to be thrown right in the middle in the soft part of the defense. So as you can see, we're able to get a lot accomplished with this play. This play is also really good because these flat routes can be quick thrown, which I'll show that as well. So let's say, for example, that your opponent decides, OK, we're going to do something like this. We're going to leave this vertical hook here. You know, but maybe we do a coverage that looks something like this, and we're still going to have to run to the left side of the screen at the snap of the ball. 
Okay, so we're gonna go to that four vertical setup, and what you're gonna see here is we're gonna read quickly that they go to the left. So then when we look back to the to look back to the right side, we see oh there's a yellow zone in there. Okay, you see how that vert hook still gets pulled out by the flat? That's because I shaded outside. If they shade that vertical hook inside, I'll show you what that looks like as well here. But typically what should happen is that vertical hook should go to the tight end and then it's gonna leave openings over on the right side. So again, we'll go to four verticals, hitch this guy, post the left side receiver and streak the running back. And what you'll see is here, this time he kind of stays, actually he still kind of went over there. That's crazy that that vert hook's doing that. But let's say they do, let's say he fully commits to stopping the hitch because they will ultimately do that. If you throw this play enough, they will basically full commit to stopping your hitch route. And I'll show you what that would look like so that you can actually see that there's another vulnerability in the defense if they decide to do that. So if they do decide to fully commit to stopping your hitch route, what will happen is this tight end flat will be able to be thrown. And the cool part about these wheel routes is they're just – they just get really good rap catch animations, which is what makes them very, very useful uh, for the offensive scheme as a whole. So this is one of my favorite setups. Now we're going to go to a secondary setup out of this uh, that I really like to utilize. Tight slots is such a versatile formation. But let's get back into four verticals. And, uh, and we're going to kind of do a similar concept, but just a slight variation of this. And so what we're going to do here is this is kind of more so for like a traditional uh, kind of standard coverage beater. But what I like to do is we're going to post this right of screen, or I'm sorry, we're going to post the left of screen slot receiver. We're going to streak the running back. And then with the tight end here, a couple different options of things that you can do with him. But really, I think it's just a simple out route if you want to do that, or a little in route if you want to do that. Just something simple like this. And what this does is it just makes it harder for the user to be able to continue to to use her in the middle of the field, all right? So the next setup we're gonna be going over is a setup at a post full drag. This is really good, especially for that cover four drop style defense, which a lot of people like to run, especially to the, to the wide side of the formation. So if they run something like that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the tight end on a tight end apprentice corner. We're gonna streak the right of screen outside receiver, and then we're gonna streak the running back. So you see, this is what the route combination looks like. Our first read's always to the flat here to the left and then to the running back, but really the best route on the field is this tight end apprentice corner because as you can see, it's a short corner. So it's gonna get outside of this. It's gonna get basically underneath deep thirds and deep quarters, but it's gonna get over the top of any kind of pressed hard flat or curl flat defender. So you see here, again, we'll show it to you. This is a cover three with hard flats. And what you'll see is that third has to go to that streak. That's open to the right. Now, one other little pro tip that I would provide to you that I think does make this a little bit better of a route combo is if you go ahead and instead of streaking the right side guy, go ahead and fade him. And by with the, you'll see this fade. He gets this nice clean release and look at this quarter gets sucked back just a little bit more. And now it's going to get a little bit more open. Now, I wanted to show you some other adjustments that your opponent could do uh, to try to counter this play. And this is why I think this is really the ultimate play in the formation for the way the meta is right now with the baseline press dollar uh, defense. So this is a cloud flat to the outside. And what you'll see, again, look at the fade, pull that route. You see that cloud can't get back far enough. And then we can basically pass lead that up and out to the right. And we're able to able to attack the defense that way. So the cool part is they can't really play cover four. They can't really play cover three. And then this is where our uh, the, the, less, the rest of the reads are going to come in handy. So let's say that they decide, okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to run like this cover three cloud because this cover three cloud is going to do a really good job because this cloud flat has a good chance to defend the corner route. The vert hook can defend that little underneath route. And then they might, you know, do all kinds of stuff. You never know what they're going to do on the backside of this. But in general, this is kind of a, a standard a standard way they could play you. So what you're, what you're ultimately going to have here, though, is you can throw this deep post route kind of in this little window and basically catch it before he gets to the KO, as you see right there. And what that is going to do is it's going to require your opponent 
to have to basically user that post route. So in essence, it would look something like this. Let's say they're using that right side guy. So we're going to try to simulate that they're going to user that post route and try to take that away. Again, I think it's helpful to fade this uh, slot receiver or this right side receiver. And then what you'll see is when your running back streak kind of clears the yellow zones, it's going to get right in behind the defense just like that. Super, super effective, super, super effective route combo right there. Now, another really good version of this play or, or reason that this play is really, really effective is another popular adjustment that we get a lot when you're running tight slots is you're going to get some variation of cover two especially to the left side. So it might look something like this, right? But you're still going to get that cover two style of coverage. And then ultimately this guy's probably going to have to use the running back here, you know, or if they're using this guy, this guy's going to have to use the running back. And then this could be all kinds of different adjustments. But honestly, something like this wouldn't be terrible uh, for tight slots. But anyways, the point being, this is kind of a, a pretty good adjustment that they're going to have for you. Well, what you're going to be able to do with this play is you're going to be able to wait on this post and throw it on the sideline as he stops in the middle of the field. And that was a terrible – I don't know what just happened to my quarterback. But he will he will basically run his post route across the middle, and you can hit it essentially on the sideline. So, you know, let's say they did something like like this, maybe with a quarter. You know, there, there's a lot of different things they might do to try to, to try to take away the, the slot streaks, which we'll come back to that in just a minute. But I just want to go over this post real quick, and then we'll and then we'll touch on some other stuff. So, what you'll see is when this post kind of cuts across the middle of the field, you see how the half is kind of going to that defender, and you see how I can throw that over the top, and that will get over the top of a thirty-yard cloud on either side, which leads us kind of to our next play. And this is why I like tight slots because the plays really do work well together. So let's jump out of this and let's go ahead and grab a a 30 and a five Mabel coverage and kind of go through how I like to attack that coverage with this. And for the purpose of this, obviously we're going to be audibly into these, but I'm just going to start coming out in tight slots just to kind of save us a little bit of time. So the next play we're going to go over is mesh spot. This is really a great play this year. I think it's really, a, I think it's probably the best play in the formation, but anyways, what you're going to see here is I'm going to use 30 and fives. Now, the first thing I want to show is kind of back to the original post wheel drag setup. A lot of times what you're going to see here, and this is, again, we're audibly to this out a bunch, right? So that it's going to also limit kind of some of the things. But as long as we get some time in the pocket, see how I can kind of throw it up and over that, that 30 or that cloud. Now, you would want to throw it a little bit earlier than I did, 100%. Now, another thing that I would say that is important to bring up if you ever want to run this with your tight end to the short side, this would be a route combo that's really good for that. So I'll show you kind of what it looks like. So let's say we wanted to kind of take advantage of a 30 and 5, but we wanted to do it to the right side. And this is just kind of knowing your, your offense a little bit more. But in general, what we're going to do here is we're going to streak this guy instead of fade him now. And this is one of my favorite favorite plays in the game. And then we're going to take the running back, kind of flex him out in a five wide look and just put him on a little baby in route. He's going to be a check down. This is a great combo. Same kind of read progression. We're looking at the flat first, then up the seam, and then to these little check downs. But what you'll see is this post route. See how it gets thrown? You can throw it on the sideline. And we know that in this year's game, those kind of throws get caught a lot. So that's another little route combo you can use from this that's going to be really effective in that situation. Now, that being said, let's go back and – discuss the 30 yard cloud flat on the left and how to deal with that because that will be something that you will face so if we are getting a 30 yard cloud to the left mesh spots a great play to call so what we're going to do is we're going to streak the left side receiver if you want a smart route circle you certainly can do that and then from there it's really up to you in terms of how you want to put routes around this to hold the user one of the one of the ways that i like to do it is to put the running back on a texas route and block the tight end this is a great man-beating play. This is just a great overall play in general. But the main thing I want to show you is look at this post route. You'll see that when it runs, it will clear that 30, and you can throw it on the sideline just like that. So if we think through, okay, what are they going to have to do to, to, to user this and defend this? And, and that's, that's really the question. Well, really what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to go guard the, 
they're going to have to go guard that post route. Ultimately, that's what they're going to have to do. So if they're in a 30-yard cloud here to the left, they're going to have to take this post route over the middle, right? So what this does, and it depends a little bit on how they're going to play their coverage. A lot of people play their coverage like this, okay? So they're going to roll their coverage. is very popular. So because they're going to do something like that, this is where you got to have a little bit of protection, which is why we're blocking the tight end. But what you'll see is this drag will clear out the purple, and then the Texas route comes right underneath it. The Texas route is basically, in my opinion, this year's variation of a slant route. It, it really practically kind of plays like that. So this is going to do a really good job against the double flat over there on the left-hand side to be able to give you something that is going to get over the top of a 30-yard cloud. Now, another thing a lot of people like to do is they like to use these inside quarters to try to kind of, I guess, deter the seam streaks. This would just... This would just make this a little bit more open, honestly, for us. Now, there's a couple things we can do. I love this running back Texas pattern. What I would recommend is you, if you if you don't need to block your tight end, put him on a flat route, and what you'll see is he'll pull this zone out, then that drags there, and then the running back's there, and then this comes over the top to be thrown right in that little pocket. Super, super effective little play and mesh spot. Okay, so we've kind of discussed like double Mabel coverage in general. And then for this next setup, we're going to be talking about Flood as like a big, big hitter potential play and uh, just something to look for in terms of this. So again, kind of back to the cover two t conversation. I feel like in this formation, you, you definitely have the potential to get a lot of this kind of backed off cloud style of defense and, and you want stuff that's going to be able to really manipulate that so one of my favorite things to do from time to time is to motion this guy out on a post and then we're going to leave this corner here to the right side or to the left side from there what we're going to do is we're actually going to run a little tight end corner and then you can run this guy on a flat if you want to and then just block your running back something simple like this this is a scissor action and the main purpose of this is to try to split the cover two up the middle as you see right here, we're, one of the other important pieces, though, is you're trying to split this cover two without it getting usered. That is one of the most underrated aspects of what we're trying to do here. So we want to have something that is going to come over the middle that will force them to have to guard it. So, again, very typically, this would be a, a very common look, right? Very, very common look, something like this. And then the user's in the middle of the field. Maybe they're sitting four, maybe they're not. The big point is we're trying to take advantage of these, of these deep halves. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to put some kind of corner route to the right side. You have to have a corner route to the right for this to work properly. So what I like to do is take the tight end, put him on a tight end apprentice corner. And then, as we said, we need something in the middle of the field. So one of the easiest things is a running back Texas route with a flat route. The running back Texas route pretty much has to be used. Or you see how it kind of gets underneath the zones? So they're going to have to really commit to taking away that running back Texas route if they're going to try to get a stop on you. So what a lot of people are going to end up doing is they're going to jump at it quick. So you'll see it would look, it would look something kind of like this where they're going to jump at it quick with their user and that's really all you need. You just need a little bit of a little bit of a, an action on the user. Now the reason for the motion out as you see right here I find that this post route does not kill cover two if it's not motioned out. So that is kind of the main purpose of the motion out. Now we're going to talk in a minute about other additional plays you can do with motion out. And I do think it's important to discuss that as well. Because if you don't have other plays, obviously they'll be able to sit on this. But in general, just this right here. This is a very, very good one play touchdown against cover two. And it doesn't look like it. It looks like we're just running a clear out streak. All of a sudden, he breaks to the post, and you have a one-play touchdown against cover two. Okay? So super, super good play for cover two. And now we're going to cover uh, a cover three and cover four beater that I like out of this formation. So the best way, in my opinion, to beat cover three or cover four is really the next thing that we're going to be discussing. And uh, it's, it's, kind of, um, it's kind of a unique way to do it. But basically, let's just go over cover three. So... It's out of this play flood. We're going to smart route this post route. So it's kind of like the wide trail post. And then from there, you have a couple of different variations in which we can get at the same thing. But what I love to do is this little flat corner route to the right. And then on the left side, you can do a streak and a running back Texas, as you can see. 
And again, this just makes it so that they have to use her something in the middle of the field. And then as you see, this gets really up in the middle, up in the seam area of the field, and it can take the top off of a cover three shell. So that's one option uh, that you have in terms of a, you know being able to bomb cover three. The one unfortunate thing about tight this year is this is not a really good bomb against cover four. So you'll see here, here's cover four. Watch this inside quarter. Actually, I guess it can kind of get over here to the side because everybody has deep out zone knockouts at, at every position now. It makes it, this bomb a little bit more difficult to be hit. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to talk about another very another method to bombing cover four here in a minute. But what you'll see, you're going to have to really wait on him to get to the sideline. You see how you're kind of throwing it really really in, in kind of a tight window. I just think it's a tight throw uh, to be able to make. Another thing you can do against cover four is you cannot smart route it. If you don't smart route this, it'll run a little bit deeper. And so we'll show you here. See how the user should have to go to the Texas pattern. And then you see how this can be thrown kind of on the sideline. You just don't want the ball to get stuck in the air as it did right there. So as I said, I think cover four is one of the harder coverages uh, to be able to consistently bomb out of this formation. So one of the ways that I like to do it is uh, to kind of essentially just basically drag this outside guy. We're going to trail this defender here. And then with the running back, a couple different things we could do with him. We could put him on a wheel route if we wanted that corner route to be a read, which I'll talk about in a minute. Or we could just block him because it is a bomb play. We're trying to kind of get some extra protection. But what you'll see is this outside quarter on the right. He'll kind of sit down because there's nothing for him to go get. And a lot of times that post can actually get over the top on the left side of the screen. And you, can, you see this a, a little bit as well from uh, post wheel drag. But, but basically that's the idea that we're trying to tr kind of get at here you know, which is basically this right here, that the only vertical route is his post. See how that quarter really doesn't get back? And you can kind of throw this on the sideline. The inside quarter is playing out of his mind. But uh, in general, that would if you really wanted to try to bomb cover four, manipulate cover four, that would be something that I would look at doing is smart routing the flood play and then or the post route from flood, which is going to turn it more into like a wide trail kind of post route. But as you see, it just doesn't run sharp enough for me for it to be a consistent option against cover four. Now, that being said, one of the things I like to do here from time to time is if I ever want to run this with my tight end to the right, but I want to attack to the left, this is what's going to get this deep corner route over the top of a 30-yard cloud. So let's say they're pressing you on the left side. You can put the running back on a wheel, put this guy on the left on a streak, and then basically the combo would look like this. And now it's still a left side flood play, but notice that the running back run, run, running back will, actually that's crazy that that quarter just did that. <laughs> the running back will typically will be able to, or the, the running back will would typically be able to, to clear out coverage a little better than he just did. So let's see if we can get that, that running back will to clear it out a little better. We've got a random bump animation. But you see, if we wait on this, this should be open to the sideline. Josh Williams is playing out of his mind out there. But in general, uh, just, just something to look at. You could also get the same action from the play bench, which is also important to discuss. And the cool part about this is this would then mix up your plays a little bit. So you do it from this corner or this receiver here. You see he doesn't bump, and now you can throw this to the sideline because the, the outside quarter is having to take the running back wheel when he wheels up field. So we'll show this one more time, and then we'll talk about some other things you can do. So basically it looks like this, and then you see this corner on the left side, just pass it down. I wouldn't freeform, I'd just pass it down and outside, and you see how I can throw it to the sideline deep. So the cool part about that, the cool part about that route combo is let's say that I throw 30s and 5s out here on the field, and we'll do it from the play bench because the corner routes from bench are a little bit deeper. Basically, you would get something that looks kind of like this. And if I was if I was the opponent, I'd probably put this guy in an inside quarter because this takes away a lot of bombs. So, you know, some, some kind of coverage show that looks like that, right? Very popular. Well, we're going to go to this, and I would even fade the slot. Now, on the right side, you can really do whatever you want. My favorite thing to do is to have either a – I love having a backside drag and a trail route or just a simple – I mean, even just even just a simple backside drag and a block tight end, okay? But what you'll see here is this deep corner out from bench. He'll actually clear that 30. He'll actually clear that 30. He didn't get all the way over the top there, but in game he will get a little bit more clearance than what we're seeing here 
It's just kind of the way practice mode works, I've noticed, with these corner routes. But if you do see a backed off corner, I would say, you know, go ahead and run flood because flood is just a, it's just going to run a little smoother. But you see here, free form, high point, get it up and over the top of the defender. You see how he gets over the top. So that's a super valuable asset to kind of attacking these Mabel, these Mabel coverages. And I'll talk about it to the right here in a minute. But let's talk about this one more time. We're going to look at this from the lens of the play flood. So if I get the, if I call the play flood, one of my favorite things to do is just leave this wheel route. You know, we could do something like this, especially if we're on this hash mark. This is pretty effective. What you'll see is that deep corner from Flood has a good chance of getting over the top on the left as well. Even though practice mode is, is defending that, in-game it's not going to defend that as well. Now, that being said, I want to jump back over here to, um, to things like post-wheel drag and bench and look at 30-yard clouds to the right. So how would I manipulate a third? The cool part about tight is you have corner routes. Uh, you have the threat of corner routes to both sides of the field. So how would I would ma manipulate this coverage to the right? I would just run a sh uh, basically bench, and I would use a tight end streak. And then really we could do whatever we want on the left side here. So if we wanted to do something even just like this, we certainly could. But what you'll see here on the corner route is, again, provided we can get it up and over, it gives us a really nice window to be able to get over the top of that 30-yard cloud. So if... If they are running a 30-yard cloud, another cool little thing that you can do, it's really underrated from this formation because not a lot of people are doing this. And I want to talk about motion as well in just a minute. But let's throw this guy out. Let's throw the tight end on a corner route. Now we have a double corner concept. So the 30-yard cloud has to choose, am I going to guard the deep corner or the tight end corner, right? It's a pre pretty much a basic, a very basic choice. Uh, that he's going to have to make. So that's that's another little avenue that you could go as well with this is if you wanted to try to manipulate with the double corner stuff, you could very easily put the tight end on a corner. And then this is what a lot of people, I think, just are kind of sleeping on from tight. And it's a really simple thing. We're just going to motion this guy across on a streak. And you see this is what the route combo now looks like. And this is double corner. It's 100% double corner from like a bunch tight end look. And then you could do something like that on the backside, and you see that this deep corner has a really good chance to get over the top of the defender, okay? So that's just a way that you can kind of get at some of the same principles that, uh, that we've applied from other formations into this formation. So like, let's say it's cover four or uh, cover three or whatever. This is really good for that. This, just this simple combo here on the left side. You could do whatever you want on the right. So, you know, you could do this. On the right side if you want to you could block the running back and just run something like this if you wanted to whatever you want to do on the left the main thing here is look at the tight end corner this is wide open against cover four cover three and they have to run cover two and if they run cover two so if they're pressing you on the right side this is one of the best route combos that you can do on that right side now that leads me back to kind of discussing this motion out of the running back Another little avenue that you could go is you could motion the running back out on a little little swing or flat route. He'll hold the flat defender, as you see, and then it opens up that tight end window even more so. So that's another little window you could go to to kind of just mix and match and, and uh, allow your scheme to kind of you know fit to however you want to play it. So I haven't talked so far in this ebook about man coverage. I wanted to spend a little bit of time with you. We've talked a lot about zone. Because if you're if you're honestly if you're running tight, you're going to get a significant amount a significant amount of zone coverage. Okay, you just are. But let's say that you're let's say that they're you know maybe going to fly you in man to man coverage. This this formation was created to beat man. Okay, it truly was. So what we're going to do our simple way to beat man is really the mesh spot setup, where we're going to put that running back on the Texas route. We have good protection here. And pretty much every route is a threat against man. The first one is, let's say this guy just beats man press off the ball and there's no safety help over the top. We would want to at least look at him as a potential read. So what your opponent is probably going to do is they're probably going to put some safety help over the top of this defense. And then they're now going to have to be put in a position where their user is kind of in no man's land, for lack of a better word. So let's say the user here is to the right side of the screen. Then what we're going to do here, it makes the read really easy, honestly. If they run this coverage, then we have this post route to the left. 
once he cuts to the to the left, that is going to get free formed and should be able to beat man. Now, if you know from like beyond shadow of a doubt, you're facing cover two man every play or cover one robber every play. One little simple trick that I would recommend is using your hot route master or slot apprentice to be able to get a sharper man beating post route on the field. And you see how they bump into each other a little bit more. And it's just going to, it's just going to help. It, it really will. So that's one little route that you could go. So typically what's going to happen though, is they know that that's the best route on the play. So they're going to go defend that with their user defender. They're oftentimes going to go to your, your, your most, uh, your deepest threat. So they're going to probably go to that mesh spot. So now what we can do is this is where this drag route and this, this running back route, as we're getting a little bit bumpy in, in uh, practice mode, the drag route and running back route should beat man coverage consistently enough that it, it should make it very simple for you. Okay. So let me try to show that a little bit more here. And again, showcase the user going here on mesh spot. So you see drag is open, running back comes open late. And it's almost like I said, it's, it's very similar to a slant route. So another route combo that you can use, let's say they're running a lot of cover one robber on you. This is one of my favorite, favorite route combos in the game to utilize against cover one robber, especially if the user is coming, it kind of, kind of staying to the right side. We're going to go to mesh spot again, but this time we're going to flat the outside uh, or the left side receiver. We're going to flat the tight end and we're going to leave this running back wheel. So what you'll see in this running back wheel is you're going to get a man swap and he's going to absolutely destroy the man coverage. And it's going to be an easy big play for your for your uh, for your offense against man coverage. So that's another real easy method uh, to be able to beat man coverage. I'm really not a, a ton concerned of people playing you in man coverage a lot because a lot of your plays just naturally from tight they just do a really good job of beating man coverage. It's hard to play man coverage against tight tight formations. So another one that we have this post will drag. Remember this setup. A lot of stuff beats man on this. So the tight end corner, as you see, it beats man to the outside. The post route from the left side coming across the middle of the field, he's going to beat man coverage. So another thing you could do, and this kind of goes back to that post wheel drag, and just having kind of the cool part about tight, I think, is it just has really good disguise in the plays. But just streaking the right side receiver to be a clear out in case they're in cover two to the right or whatever. And then the cool part is you have this tight end drag, and then from there, you could just block your running back for extra protection. But this route combo here, really effective against man coverage because this little uh, wheel route on the left side, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of times this route gets open against man coverage. So it's at least a shot play if they don't have KO. Most people, unless they're running exclusive man coverage on you, they're not going to have KO. So if they're just manning people up every now and then, you can hit that, that, uh, that wheel route out of post wheel drag. And again, this is a really simple setup. I mean, we're just blocking the blocking the running back and, and, and going here. And as you see here, this post route kills man coverage. So the thing with tight is it's it's really hard to defend tight in man. Uh, it's it's much easier to defend tight in zone. Another one other thing I wanted to say uh, as far as just man to man coverage in general against tight is just kind of understand what you're working with. So this is why the running back motion out is really good, and a lot of people don't do the motion out, but it is really important. Because I can do something like this. This is a simple route combo, but it opens everything up, spaces the field tremendously well, and it allows for a really good little man beater over the middle because they can't press the running back. That's the real underrated part. They can't press the running back, and it makes the running back wide open. And then you could do different things. Like, let's say, for example, you know, you're running this, and again, you're expecting, let's say you're just expecting, like, you know, zone, okay? So we go back out, and this time, again, you can use whatever you want, especially if you have Hot Route Master, you can use whatever you want. But let's say you need to use Bench. So you're going to use Bench, and what we're going to do is we're going to put the running back on just a simple ghost route for that, for whatever, right? Again, this gives the look of what we've been doing, but now he's on this route, and as you see, he's going to hold zones, and this comes open to the sideline. So it's just a way to continue to flood zone to the right, while maintaining a lot of integrity on the back end of the formation and allowing for other man beaters. So let's talk about another play uh, just in terms of man coverage. Just while we're while we're kind of visiting the subject, let's talk about 
uh, mesh spot and, and, and just give some different motioned out setups for that. So if I motion this running back out, okay. So once I do that, there's a couple of different options that I have. One of the things I can do is I could flat my tight end, you know, and then I could maybe curl the running back or something and streak this defender. Very simple. I could even do something like this. And I don't think this is a terrible route combination either because you have this quick throw out route against zone and then you have the mesh over the middle against man and then you have the deep post isolated with a streak as a clear out route. Those are just different methods at which we're able to attack different parts of the defense. One last thing I wanted to say about zone coverage that I would say I think it's important to just look at here is let's say I wanted to let's say I wanted to run a motion out setup, but I want to run it in an, again. We're maybe running this play right here. Don't be afraid to run this route combo. This is very good against man. Pretty much every route beats it, except for the running back. But against zone, watch what the corner route does. He's going to pull that outside third, and then you can throw this right underneath it, just like you would like a short corner. So don't underestimate the power of like the little, you know, little post routes and stuff over the middle of the field. There's a lot open if you're willing to look for it in tight. So I hope you enjoyed this ebook.